Hi there and welcome to TechSpot, where we sniff out the groundbreaking new concepts in technology disrupting traditional sectors. I'm Ucheo Koronkwa, and this week we're eyeballing digital solutions that are reinventing informal retail in Africa. Now, like many Africans, I mostly rely on my small and informal local shop daily. The fact is, on the continent, 80% of household retail is delivered via informal retailers. Despite their importance, these informal shops have remained mostly disconnected, not just from formal supply chains, but also from Africa's digital revolution. Now, a company called Soko Watch, Soko being the Swahili word for market, has created an app that acts as a digital marketplace for these small shops. And it is delivering tailor-made solutions for them. Well, today we'll show you how digital solutions may have become a lifeline for informal traders. A typical African morning. As we get up and start the day, local kiosks are already up bright and early, stocking their shelves, ready to provide the essentials to the communities that rely on them. But the reality on the back end for the millions of informal economy traders is the daily struggle to overcome demand and supply challenges for fast-moving consumer goods. Before COVID-19, distribution systems for these shops were already virtually non-existent. Most shopkeepers had to close their shops and travel to central markets to buy goods from wholesalers, making them vulnerable to price increases and limiting their access to essential products. And with no real access to financial services, that meant restocking their shelves was costly and time-consuming. For the customer, products are frequently out of stock, and when available, it's often at a higher price. Supply chain disruptions caused by the COVID-19 pandemic have only made it worse. At the height of the pandemic in 2020, a survey by Geneva-based think tank, Impact Initiatives, found that 53% of Africa's informal retailers reported an increase in the prices of items. 46% saw a decrease in demand for commodities. As a result, 449 said they had to close shop between March and June 2020. A further 330 shut down in August. 33% said it was due to lack of money to restock, while 20% pointed to the lack of commodities from suppliers. Well, an app called Soko Watch is attempting to deliver a tailor-made digital solution to their doors via a mobile app and a three-wheeled tuk-tuk. At the tap of a button, small shop owners can now source essential goods on their phone and have them delivered to their bustling markets quickly and free of charge. And when cash is low, they can buy goods on credit. Sokowatch currently works with 15,000 of these informal retailers across four different countries, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, and Uganda, nine different cities between them, really focused on these working class, low income neighborhoods, informal settlements. And within that existing group of 15,000 shops, we estimate that over 1.5 million people depend on those small stores right now to get access to essential goods and services. Here's how the app works. At the top of the morning, a shopkeeper places his order on his mobile phone via the app or for those without internet, toll-free text messages. Meanwhile, at this SokaWatch central distribution hub, agents receive the order via the app and load the products on this small and urban-friendly tuk-tuks. Then Circle Watch drivers are off to fulfill the orders, and the process repeats itself until the sun sets on the day. On the customer end, there's an app where they can see all the products that we have, like the catalog of everything that we have, uh, the products that we have in stock, and from there they can tell anything that is in stock, something that is out of stock, so they can pick from that list what they need uh, for their shops. We have again another option of sales team. We have guys in the ground 
who always pass by the shops during the day. So they can uh, again uh, give their orders to these particular guys uh, who will see to it that they get it. We decided to follow one of Soko Watch drivers on his delivery routes into one of Nairobi's busiest markets, Kawangwari. It is already apparent that several shops here already rely on the app to replenish their supplies daily. That one improved my... my it's my certainly a game changer for Mike, who's run this small store in Kawangwari for the last three years. Today he is ordering his goods on credit, which he says has helped manage constraints on his cash flow. I was introduced to Sokowatch by their agents. They came to my shop and we got to talking and exchanging ideas. Before I met them, I would source my daily stock from wholesalers, which was very difficult because I would have to find some means of transport. If my cargo was heavy, I couldn't transport it myself. I would have had to hire a car. Sokowatch really helped because once I book on the app, they deliver it fast. If I order products today, they give me seven days before I have to pay, which has improved my bottom line. For credit, you have to qualify for it, of course. <laughs> so this, this depends on historical uh, data, on how, how we have been doing business with you. Um, normally, it starts maybe with as low as 500 shillings of credit. Then this, this will continue as, uh, as the, we do more, and as, as we understand the trend on how such a shop need goods, we, we, uh, we continue adding more and more so that they, they, they can get more goods on credit. Despite the need for more efficiency in Africa's informal retail supply chain, many companies have tried to introduce e-commerce products and failed. They quickly learn that the conditions on the ground in Africa are very different. Well, we asked a Circle Watch Kenya CEO, Angela Nzioki, how they seemingly have bridged the gap between e-commerce services and informal players. The way we've gone about making sure that retailers um, are using the, the app and uh, becoming a little bit more tech savvy is showing them um, the need as to why they, they need to be able to move to the app. Um, and I equate it to the success that M-Pesa had. So what SoCoach has done really, really well is create a credit offering for retail stores where they can get um, goods on consignment. Uh, and majority of them can be able to get that value added service by really learning how to use um, some of the, the apps or some of the technology that we have in place. CircleWatch didn't just create a smartphone app. It built an inventory management system over time. With at least three years of data on retailers' requests, their needs can be predicted based on their past orders. And that has enabled the company to know what goods to source from large manufacturers and then stock them at its distribution hubs daily. Historical transaction data also allows it to structure and integrate credit to its customers better. By negotiating better prices from suppliers, the firm primarily generates revenue by taking a cut off the savings it makes for clients. And with its fleet of urban-friendly tuk-tuks and its geotagging and mapping system, it is also able to deliver goods more efficiently. Now, Soko Watch is not the only tech company in this space. There are a number of tech entrepreneurs who have caught on to the fact that Africa's informal sector, though chaotic, is a huge untapped resource. In fact, it's actually highly connected with complex supply chains containing markets within markets. Now, the key seems to be using technology to create a bridge between all the players. Did you know a Kenyan-based company called Twigger Foods created a digital platform that is linking farmers and vendors to modern markets in Nairobi city? By buying fresh produce from a network of farmers and delivering it to thousands of informal vendors, it is making the price of produce cheaper and reducing typical post-harvest losses for farmers from 30% to just 4%. Twiga has created a network of 17,000 farmers and 8,000 vendors. Also, Kenyan delivery service Sendi has managed to lower logistics expenses for businesses in Africa by providing a platform for informal motorcycle and car drivers who own their own vehicles to link up with clients who need deliveries. 
its app manages payments and creates performance metrics, making it a dependable platform. Its fleet rivals tuk-tuks on reliability, and as a result, it counts FMCGs like Unilever among its clients. There is ample room for more tech firms to take up space within Africa's informal market. But what is becoming clear is that in order to have staying power, data is king. Circo Watch believes that's where its edge lies. It can become a necessary part of the ecosystem. Leveraging its wealth of data, it can now advise manufacturers and producers who previously did not have visibility as to how their products are doing in specific areas, and that's because of broken down distribution networks. It is using the opportunity to better service FMCG manufacturers with consumer insights and at the same time expand its business offerings. Kenya CEO Angela says they are the missing piece. Technically, SoCourt does define itself as a tech and a data company using uh, the data to be able to distribute um, fast moving consumer goods to the retail stores. Um, how we went about gathering majority of this data is we did send out foot soldiers. We also have our own delivery agents um, and salespeople that do map out um, the shops in the communities or rather in the retail stores um, that we serve. Um, and then what happens is um, the stores themselves, either using the SoCoach customer app or our call center or SMS, can be able to place their orders. And over time, we've been able to gather the amount of um, order history or order data, uh, which has helped us in so many different ways. Um, it's been able to help us improve our credit rating score for some of these retail stores. It's been able to help us um, uh, better structure our marketing efforts and our product availability efforts to some um, some of the regions that we are working with. Um, and even better yet, um, it's been able, able to solve a very big manufacturer problem, which if you look at um, traditionally how the FMCG space was, um, manufacturers up the pipe really didn't have um, availability or visibility of how their products was being distributed into, into the shops. And this is something that SoCoach has been very instrumental in terms of trying to bridge that gap. Well, Africa's massive informal sector certainly doesn't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon, but it is slowly changing over time. Tech entrepreneurs are now finding ways to collaborate rather than dominate Africa's informal players, and that can produce a viable return on investment. But of course, it will never be a one-size-fits-all solution.